Today, we're going to do an update on the Parajubea terrellii, the mountain coconut, native to high elevations of South America. And uh, second week of June, I thought there was some slight hope for this thing because there was actually a, a spear opening up on it, but unfortunately, that spear that was opening up on it started to turn brown, declined, gave it a little tug, and it kind of popped out. So uh, I didn't have high hope for this species. I treat this one as a total experiment, even though I did uh, put an umbrella over top of it, a patio umbrella, and I actually did wrap most of this palm with burlap, but it still did not like the minus eight degrees Celsius we had. We had minus eight degrees Celsius. You can see the screen. It's in beyond that uh, Guatemalan cherry down there. But anyway, this palm I believe is toast. The little uh, waggies below it, around it, are okay. But, uh, and then the Trachycarpus fortunae palms, they're not a problem. But mountain coconut, Parajubea trellii, is not a long-term palm for us here on Salt Spring Island. And it's a real shame. It was uh, gifted to me. And uh, he said, plant it and see if it makes it. Well, um, it would be cool if it was a long-term palm, but they're not. And, you know, they're very expensive palms, too. So, um... If you're going to plant one of these things, you might want to use some heat cables and, uh, <laughs> I don't know, protect it a lot better than what I did. And uh, once every 10, 15 years, we get a good cold blast. And unfortunately, it put this one to the test and it failed the test. So not worthy of our garden. I do have another one in the greenhouse. I have a Cocoides. And um, I did actually have that one in the ground for a couple of years, but it was stressed out growing under the cedar tree. So I put it back in a pot. It's actually coming along nicely. But I don't think I'll be planting it in the ground anymore. I think it'll just stay in the pot and I'll just use it as an ornamental, as a potted plant. But uh, this guy here is, uh, well, wouldn't it be something if it did end up pushing out another spear? I doubt it though. And it had a pretty good sized trunk on it. So um, in the mildest growing areas of the North Pacific long term, Brookings, Oregon, I would say Gold Beach, Southern Oregon coast, this palm would probably work pretty good. Maybe even Florence, Oregon, pushing it. Florence, Oregon, halfway down the coast, but a bad winter, you're probably going to have to protect it there. Anywhere south of there probably has a lot better chance of surviving. So there's your update on the mountain coconut. I would say instead of pushing up the daisies, it's pushing up the palm trees. That is in palm heaven. That's the remain. That's that's what remains of the mountain coconut, and uh, it's got kind of a shaggy trunk on it, like a like a tracky. I mean, look at the trackies. Trackies are just so nice. They just thrive, right? They're just, they're not a problem. Trackies are just like foolproof here. But these other ones got to be treated as an experiment. Jubea chilensis lost its spear. Uh, one of our brahias lost its spear. And one of our mule palms lost its spear. And uh, like I say, it was a bad freeze late December. And that weeds out the wimpy plants. And uh, that one was, I guess, just too wimpy for our climate. All right. Thanks for watching, folks, and uh, check out more videos here on this channel. A little bit of a close-up. I'm standing behind a fence here. It's kind of downslope for me, but there it is. Trunk. Better shot of it. Cheers.